Hello, CC friends. Thanks for joining for today's art lesson. I'm Allie. We're going to be looking at Mr. Fra Angelico. For week 13, we did Giotto. Week 14, Lorenzo Gerberti. And today is Mr. Fra Angelico. Here we have a painting of Mr. Fra Angelico. Here's one of his paintings called The Annunciation. And it says detail. Whenever you see the word detail, that means they're not showing you everything that's in the picture. They're just showing you a small portion of detail of it. Here is the full version of Mr. Fra Angelico's painting that he did. We can see we have Mary here, and this is when the angel is coming to Mary and was like, hey Mary, guess what? You're gonna have a baby. But there's more than one story that's being told here in the picture. If we look over here to the left, we can see a very sad man and woman leaving a garden. This is Adam and Eve, and here's when they're having to leave the garden. But remember when that happened, God said, I'm coming, like he's gonna send a savior. And so when this happened, he knew he was gonna come and he was gonna send Jesus. So we've got this full picture right here from the Garden of Eden to the time that Christ came. This was not his name when he was born. Let's flip over on the back of this artist card. Now, this is my Southern pronunciation of these Italian names, so just bear with me. But when he was born, he was named Guido di Petro. And then he decided to become a monk. So that means like a, a priest. And he went and there he changed his name to Fra Giovanni. Fra is taken from the Italian word fratar, which means brother. And so his name was Fra Giovanni. But then, man, this dude could paint and paint angels in such beautiful and incredible ways. So they're like, um, we're gonna give this guy a nickname. And they called him Fra Angelico. Because do you see inside Angelico here is the name Angel. So he is called the angelic monk. So because he was a monk, he devoted his time into serving the Roman Catholic Church. This is one of his best known works called The Annunciation that we also have that detail on the front. And when I talk to my students, I'm like, you know, do you think that they just one day decided like, I'm gonna paint this? No, he practiced and practiced and practiced. And before he could paint this, he had to draw it. And we're gonna do that today. We're gonna draw and then we're gonna add color with oil pastel. But when they drew something or painted something once, they actually probably did it many times. Maybe they worked on a portion, practiced a different blending of colors. So let's look at another finished piece of work of his. So these two works are so very similar. Here we have Mary and the angel Gabriel coming to deliver Mary the message. Same thing here. But this one's telling two stories and this one still has a similar structure. There's slight differences, like these posts are larger, these posts are narrower. So you could look for all the things that are alike and all the things that are different. But just wanted to show you how an artist would not just do something one time, they would practice over and over again. I particularly like how he chose to do Gabriel's angel wings right here. He's got different layers of colors. Now a similarity between he and Giotto is how they would put these halos, these gold halos around the subjects, the important subjects in their paintings. So we're going to do that today. For today's study of Mr. Fra Angelico, I chose a piece of black cardstock. We're going to be drawing a similar image to what we did when we did Giotto of the mother with baby Jesus. And we're gonna be doing, working on mixing the colors and I'll just love the contrast of this black paper with the oil pastels. And then we're gonna be adorning it with some gold paper here. So we have our black card stop. We're gonna use oil pastels. We're starting with white, then we'll use some flesh tones. Then you choose what you would like Mary to be wearing, what color you want her. Then you're gonna be using gold to adorn, which is the gold foil, or you can use the gold cardstock. Either will work great and you're gonna need something to glue it down with. We're also gonna be using a pencil. First, I'm gonna take a white oil pastel. I have separated these when I did this in our community, just to make it easy for the students to grab. I had a tray of white, I had a tray of the flesh, and then I just put out all the colors when it was time to do Mary. So we take the oil pastel, 
And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw an oval. We wanna leave enough room at the top so that we can put the gold adornment. So this is in the middle of our paper. And it's like we're gonna be drawing an egg since we're using white here. It doesn't have to be super clear. We're gonna be kind of layering this on. Remember when we talked about when he drew his, he didn't just pick up a paintbrush and paint this on. He drew this out. I mean, look at the precision and the angles. And then he started adding the color and adding, layering those things on. So we have the white egg, the oval, it's a little bit to the side in the middle, and we're just gonna lightly fill this in. Because our paper is so dark, we're just trying to create a lighter base to make our color stand out. Then we're gonna come underneath here and we're going to draw a circle. This is going to be for Jesus' head. And we're going to lightly color that in. So if you notice, I'm not using a very heavy hand. Next, we're going to be putting baby Jesus' little swaddle on. Let me show you some differences. Let's look at these two. If we put a straight line on baby Jesus, do you see how it looks like Mary's arm is coming across and kind of holding him up? And if you put a curved line, it kind of looks like maybe more that he's kind of floating there. Either way is fine. I'm just showing you how changing a line, making this instead of curved or straight, can give us the illusion of something different. So let's get back to Jesus here and we're going to take our oil pastel and we're going to, what do we need to do with Jesus? Mary took Jesus and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm gonna come up to about halfway point on his head. I'm gonna do a straight line, short straight line, and then another straight line going up. So I've created a rectangle around this dot that I drew. Now I'm gonna use a heavy hand to swaddle the sweet baby Jesus. It's mostly covered up. It's okay if there's still a little black in there. Now we're going to put Mary's cloak on. So I'm gonna come here to the top of her head and I'm gonna come up a little bit and then curve down. You can do it smooth like this, or you can put a little movement in it. Either way is fine. And the thing about this is we're adding colors on top of it, so if you don't love that line, and you're like, maybe I do want it to kind of curve out, then you can just kind of draw on top of that. And then let's come and we're gonna leave a little space and let's draw this other line. Now, if I drew this straight down, I would go through Jesus' head right here. So I'm gonna kind of come around him, encapsulate him like that. If you look at my examples, you'll see here at the top of Mary, it's a little bit lighter because if the sun is shining down, then the top is going to be lighter than this part. This is more in the shadows. So we're going to lighten that up by just taking a real loose hand and I'm not holding it straight up and down, I'm holding my oil pastel to the side and just kind of making some short little scribble marks like this, okay? Nothing fancy. I kind of joked in class that it looked like a, maybe a snow-capped mountain. If someone were to walk in, they may not know what we're drawing. The same thing was probably true for Mr. Fra Angelico. There was a lot of drawing before he started, it started looking like his finished product. Next, we're gonna choose our flesh color and we're gonna add that onto our oval and to Jesus here. When you're doing that, don't do really big strokes. These are kind of smaller spaces, so we're gonna do small controlled. You could even do them in circles. Now we're going to add the face to Mary and to Jesus. To show that she's looking at an angle, we're going to draw the eyes down to the side. Let me show you an example. All right, let's say that I have my oval here. Now, if I want her to look like she's looking down to the side, then I need her eyes to be over here to the side, like this. See how it makes it look like she's looking down? If I put them here in the middle, then it looks like she's just kind of looking straight at me. And do we see in his, 
he's doing the same thing. She's looking this other way, but her eyes all the way over here to the side. We can see more of the side of her face, but we know that she is looking here at the angel. So to do that for this oil pastel, we're actually going to remove the oil pastel using a pencil. So I'm gonna come over here to the side. I'm going to draw one eye. I'm just doing a curve, another eye, and then a slight smile if you'd like. Then we're gonna do the same thing for Jesus and we can put him looking more up to Mary. So instead of drawing it right in the middle, you see how shifting the eyes to the side make it makes it look like they're looking at each other. While we have that pencil, clean off any oil pastel and write your name here in the corner. It doesn't show up super well, but we want our art to be the main focus and then have our name down here in the corner so we can remember that when we did it. Now it's time to start adding the color onto Mary. I'm using some Portfolio Series Oil Pastels. They're water soluble. They blend really well together. And oil pastels do blend well together. So I would say choose a color and then in your packet, you're like, oh wait, I wanna do green. You probably have like two greens. Get the light green, get the dark green, and we're gonna work on blending. This is going to look extra light because I have the white underneath it and then we'll blend it down. You can get two different color pinks or a pink and a purple. This is what my oil pastel bucket looks like. So dig through and find colors that you think work well together. So like purple and yellow, no. Purple and pink, yes. So basically you're finding the same color and you're finding different tints and shades of it. So I'll do blue in this example, but I've done blue, you saw pink and green. You choose what you would like. If you have something that's protecting your surface, or a scrap sheet of paper, then you could test your colors on that to make sure, because sometimes it's hard to tell, is this purple or is this black or blue? So I have a few different color blues here, and I'm gonna start with my lighter one up here at the top, and then just work my way down. One of the things I love about oil pastels is how you can layer and mix them together. So if you're like, it's not my, my dark blue's not showing up. Well, let's put light blue on. Let's give it a nice base there. And you can take your darker blue and it's gonna show up more because you're blending it with that light blue. So now we've got Mary and baby all covered up. I do have a little bit of a white line here, so be aware if you can to try to cover up all of your white lines. But do you see how well these oil pastels just blend together? Now, if you don't like the face that you drew on Mary, don't use the eraser since basically all you did was remove it, you can color back over with your oil pastel. You can give her a new face. I had some students start erasing. I'm like, oh, wait, hold on. Let me show you this little trick. Okay. Now it's time to add the gold highlights. If you're working with younger students, I would say just do Mary. You may not have time to do both of them because it's a lot of fine motor and I try to let the students do that themselves or they could just do Jesus. Oh, I'm missing a little um, highlight right there. I can see where the glue was. A rectangle piece is gonna be easier for the students to work with. So I let the younger students just do rectangles it was easier for their hands than working with these long points. For the older students, I let them have these longer points and do 
some adornment around Jesus. So hold the gold of your choice, the foil or the cardstock. Take the Q-tip and we're going to dab some on there. Start on top here with Mary. Odd numbers work well with design, like designing buildings or when you're placing furniture. And they're also represented a lot in art. Think about when we made the triptych, it was balanced because we had our center and then we had one on each side. And so we're gonna have our center piece and then we'll do two on this side and two on this side. Now, if you wanted to add more, sure you could, but you can't just add one more, add an odd number. So right now I have five, so you can then add seven. I found that this took us a full 30 minutes. And again, just limit the students on where they're putting their adornment, depending on their skill level. If you're wanting to get these nice, long pointed ones, then cut the rectangles and they could be a little bit, whatever size you would like. And then I just cut corner to corner. And then we have two beautiful gold ones. And if they're too long, then you can cut them at the base of the triangle. We also talked about symbolism in ours. I'm gonna use these for Jesus, but I'm gonna make them a little smaller. And there's meaning behind things. So some student was like, well, do I have to put five around Jesus? I'm like, you don't. What could be an odd number that you could stick around his head? And they're like three. And I was like, yes. And what could be kind of like some hidden meaning by putting three around Christ's head? that he is the three in one, that he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that they, the Trinity. And yes, I have glue on my hands. I can see some glue on here, but it will dry clear. Thanks for joining me this week as we learned more about Mr. Fra Angelico and how he was the angelic painter in the monastery and how we created these beautiful artworks with our oil pastels and our gold adornment.